My partner's in a coma. She won't be waking up. Uh, she is everything to me. We uh, we spent 24 seven together. She had everything figured out. She was the smartest woman I've seen, four degrees in four different careers. She was finishing law school. We were trying to get pregnant and all of a sudden she got a stroke 30 days ago. Took her to the hospital. They helped her an hour or so later. She was doing fine, talking to the doctor, laughing like she always did. Then she got a massive brain hemorrhage. They put her in a induced coma and she's been like that. They told us she won't be coming back the same way and they don't even know if she's coming back at all. Things don't look good and I miss her. I miss her so badly. I can't focus. I can't do my work. I can't live my life without her. We talk for hours, always. Hours, man. Hours, two in the morning and she would roll over and say, want to go for some ice cream? Yes. Uh, want to go tomorrow for coffee? Yes. And I brunch on the balcony? Yes. Want to go help me sell my used books? Yes. Want to go for a walk, look at buildings, then maybe for uh, coffee? Yes, 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 everything. She is the love of my life. She said, I want my children to have your face. I am not a good looking guy. She was an angel to me. I would take my own life in a moment, burn my soul in hell if that would make her wake up and then all this go away. There's no price. I would not pay for her to be okay again. No price. Two months into the relationship and we made a trip. Uh, we got to the hotel and she wrote fiance on the guest book. Second day we meet, she told me I love you. That was the first time someone told me I love you. I'm 40. I'm not a good looking guy. And here an angel comes and says, I love you. Now she's on a hospital bed with wires in her brain, draining fluid with part of her brain with necrosis. And the doctors tell me she can't breathe on her own. She may never will without a machine's assistance. To love you? love. Like I told you every night for the two years, we got to know each other. I love you forever. Um, to the end of times, to the end of my life, because an old friend took me out today for a walk. She and I went out a few times. She's never really interested in having a relationship with me. So I said, let's stay friends. And we did. She has two children. Uh, she told me, come over to the playground with us. Keep your mind off things for a while. I accepted. Here I was walking down the street with her and her two children. And I felt for a brief passing moment, what would have been to be with the love of my life and our own two children? It felt good. I felt pride. Then the moment passed. The, these weren't ours and my love wasn't there. It was just me, an imposter walking without a heart. My love wanted to have two children. She told me she dreamed about us having two. Nicholas and Amelia. I will never get to meet Nicholas or Amelia. I will never walk down the street with her and our two kids. I will never get to experience being a father. I will never see her smile again. I will never hear her laugh. Never again for the rest of my life. All I've got is pain, loneliness, and anger. So much anger, I would punch the gods in their faces. So much anger, I would open my own chest open and, and rip my own heart out. Death's kiss gets mistaken for love since she's not here. It's hard, man. It's damn hard. We were about to get married this year. You know, uh, me married, I've worked my whole life. That's the only thing I've done work. She worked her whole life as well. We found each other. We were both looking forward to live the rest of our lives together. I was about to stuff the wedding ring inside a plush duck. She would have loved that detail. I made a path of roses for once. She loved it. And you know, she used to call me husband uh, in front of people. I called her wife in return. And my wife, I will never get to be her husband now. And she will never get to be my wife. I love you, my love. Come back, please. I'm lost. Update. People contacted me. Told me they wanted more stories about her. Um, she works at a hospital lab. Actually, she works at two hospitals. One is her official position, which she hates and wants to quit, but it pays her bills. The other one, she simply covers for someone else. The second job pays almost nothing. It is sort of a token payment. She does that one because it is a children's hospital and she detects cancer. She wants to make sure nothing gets missed because the earlier you catch cancer, the more chances you can give a child. Once I went to pick her up after her shift, it was the middle of the night. She came out, gave me a big smile, stuck her hand inside her purse. And next thing I know, she takes out a slice of pizza. It was still hot. And even more surprising, it was a square slice. She asked for one extra for me and smuggled it out in her purse. I ate it on the spot. It was delicious. And I couldn't stop laughing while I ate it. She quacks. Yes. Like a duck. She sometimes puts her arms out in a, uh, a T pose and dances while going on electric escalator quacking like a duck out loud, very loud, but with a rhythm, 
doing a little song. Asses looks up on electric escalators and waves at me in the roof mirror uh, with a, a big smile. So she forced me to uh, eat vegetables and fruit on a daily basis. She also taught me to eat with a fork and knife properly. I learned to LA cowboy by watching working men at the table. So it was half using my hands, half using the fork and knife in a very self-taught manner. Uh, picture an ape using a knife and fork. Good job, it gets done. But with the grace of a pirate. She told me that if we wanted to have children, the best way to teach them is by example. And dad needs to know how to eat properly at the table. And that if dad doesn't eat fruits and vegetables, you know, the children won't want to either. She made an excellent point. If we're both 40. Once she grabbed my hand and ran under a bridge with me while giggling like a little girl. She stopped us in the middle of the bridge, away from the world, pushed me against a door and kissed my soul. Okay. I go under that bridge every day I go to see her. It's on the way, so I can still feel her lips. It doesn't matter if I close my eyes, not to see when the bridge comes. Somehow my body knows I cry every time. Sometimes the U drivers ask me if I am okay. I tell them the truth, I'm not. I used to have a Harry Potter scarf. I didn't know it was a franchise thing. I only bought it because it is hypoallergenic. I thought the colors were from a soccer team or something. I couldn't care less, it turns out. Uh, every girl in town would smile at me, tried to small talk about Team Gryffindor. She grabbed me a barb and pulled me inside a store, got me a white scarf. I have a beard and every time I use it, half of that damn scarf ends up on my beard. Is it, anyways, it took me weeks to figure out she did it because she was jealous of girls talking to me. He opened doors for her. I pulled chairs out for her to sit. I take her coat. I help her put on her coat. I have these traditional gentleman's ways. She loved it. She puts on my scarf for me. Old couples look at us and smile to themselves. Sometimes they even kiss and you can tell they haven't kissed in years. Update two. Uh, sadly, it is all true. I forgot this was the internet for a moment. A couple of trolls appeared out of nowhere in my chat. Doesn't bother me because people have been for the most part, respectful and kind. So that is what really matters. Some people are saying this is a creative writing because in the past I've done creating writing. I get that the internet is a crappy place and people always expect the worst out of everything. But sadly, no, this is not my creative writing. It is hell and is happening to her, not to me. That is something I need to keep reminding myself. She's the one on the hospital bed. I'm going through hell out here, sure, but she's the one suffering the most and that I have to remain strong for when she comes out of the hospital. I just don't know how sometimes. And it's sort of come like waves of emotions I still can't control. I am okay one moment. The next something reminds me of her and I began to sob like a kid in front of anyone. Here began therapy and he wants to give me pills. But my wife always told me these were the worst because she used to take them in the past. She told me they create addiction. And that life gets seen as if through a glass um, somehow. I also think numbing this pain down with medication would be not honoring her love. But then again, I might be romanticizing my own pain and that would be preventing me from handling the situation. Uh, I end up overwhelmed by emotions and talking to people on taxes, on case, etc. I never talk to people. All I want is to tell everyone what happened to her. Maybe I'm trying to get help for her because I feel so frustrated, so alone, so miserable, so helpless can't help her. That's the most terrible part. I can't do anything to help her. Um, there's nothing I can do. Not a damn thing. I just have to sit and wait. And it's driving me nuts. Again, thank you everyone who sent good wishes. Uh, just wanted it off my chest and I 